Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Team Meeting. Today we are the 12th of September 2023. Around the table today, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Mark Waits, he might or might not be able to join us. Uh, Stefan Merle is there, Bruno Verton, and Ashutash Saxena. Is that pronounced properly? Yeah. Cool, so welcome. Uh, let's get started with the usual announcements. First of all, the Jenkins Weekly 2.4, uh, no, it's 3.1, is released. Um, so the packages, Docker image are out. So last release elements, as usual, will be done by either the documentation SIG, mostly uh, Kevin and Mark, a bit later be uh, done later today. Uh, that means the Jenkins Infra team is ready to de deliver that new version to Infra CI and Weekly CI. Mainly, Stefan Murr, you are ready to go. Usually yes. it's Wednesday morning on the European time zone. But yeah, you have the go, you can proceed. Infra CI, Weekly CI. That's all for the weekly release. That's the first release without us mirroring the Apache uh, Central Maven repository. So that means that's really going on the right direction. Since we removed them, we didn't have any major uh, thing. We only released plugins. So next step will be an LTS release that should go fine and security plugin release. Do you have other announcements? Nope. Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe eventually. The, oh, that would be the major event. Sorry. No, I was thinking of the world. Uh, DevOps world. DevOps world. Yep. yep. And I'm calendar. So upcoming calendar, we should expect the version 2.4.32 uh, of Jenkins next week. It will be in uh, September 19th. That will be the same day as uh, your team meeting. Don't remember for the next LTS. So let me check last week notes. Yes, <laughs> my cheat sheet. 26, 4, 26, maybe? No. Uh, no, 27. 23. Oh. Yep. The next LTS oh. release. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm wrong about the number. It's. So the weekly release today was 2.423. So you are correct. Next week will be 24. And the next LTS release of Jenkins will happen the 20 September 2023. Uh, tomorrow can remove RC. Week. Yes, absolutely. RC was done last week. And that version will be 2.440.2. Uh, do we have announced Jenkins advisories? Unless you have something about the weekly or LTS release. Nope. Okay. So we had a Jenkins plugin security advisory last week, last Wednesday, during our past milestone, which went very well. Uh, there wasn't any plugin that we are using, uh, except job configuration history on one of our private controllers. But that's not a concern and has been updated. So nothing to say about the release, the security releases. Last element, next major event, uh, DevOps World. DevOps World happened in New York this week, uh, this Thursday and it's Friday, then Chicago 27 September, and it will be in Santa Clara in October. I don't know for the Asian and European steps if they happen or not and when. So we'll wait for Mark to give us more news next week. Yeah, I think London is already planned and I think it's January or February next year. Cool, thanks. So if you want to meet some community members, that's one of the opportunity. And there will be a session, sorry to interrupt, there will be a yep. session after each day of conference, uh, which is called 
uh, let's talk about Jenkins. So it's not ask me anything. It's just 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 talk about Jenkins, and one community member will be there to discuss Jenkins with all the participants. Let's talk about Jenkins. Nice. Thanks. Um, I believe the first dam has been confirmed to happen. Yes. Three and four of February, I think. February 2024. Okay, that's all for the upcoming major events. So before we jump on the task, the infrastructure task, it's for you, Ashutosh. Uh, it's your turn. So can you explain us your requirements under this recording? I will take notes. If you need me, I can lead you and let you share your screen, or you can guide me on that uh, screen share. You drive. Yes. So, uh, yes, so uh... oh, I think you have been frozen. We can't hear you, or is it only me? Neither. No, Ashutosh. I can't hear him. Ashutosh, I think you have been good. Yeah. You don't seem to be muted, but we can't hear you. OK. OK, no, so better. right now. Better. better. You're back. Right now, we are using GitHub Actions uh, for uh, uploading uh, Docker Im images and my personal Docker Hub account for hosting the images, which uh, uh, which is uh, not which should not not be trusted by users. So we need official Jenkins account uh, in Docker Hub for images and for testing the images and uh, if they're working or not. Uh, we'll need uh, to shift from J uh, GitHub Actions to Jenkins CI. Mm, because so today you are you are already using GitHub registry to store the Docker image. Is my understanding correct? Yes, but they are hosted on my personal uh, repository right now. Oh, I was Docker. speaking about um, ghcr.io, which is a, a container image registry like the Docker Hub. Can, that can be used publicly or privately, like Docker Hub, uh, but it's inside GitHub, which has the advantage to, if you use a GitHub action, you immediately can start working on building the GitHub, uh, the, the image on GitHub action, and then immediately store it and distribute it through that registry as a first step, of course. So right now, I don't think we're using that. Uh, we are just uh, uploading the images directly to my own. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yes. Okay, I, I believe it will be safer for you and for the, the project to start with ghcr.io. The reason is that anyone who has the maintainer permission on your GitHub repository can also deploy an image based on the build from GitHub action. So not only it will be safer as a first step, again, it's a first step, I'm not saying we don't have to move to Jenkins something, uh, but right now it's a first step for you because that will allow you to use a Docker image that can be shared with others, not only you. It's technically possible with your current setup, but that will be easier for handling the, uh, the project to avoid staying on a one person project. And also, that should unblock you until we make a decision on where to store the image for that project. And do we need to store it as an official Jenkins asset? Does it make sense for everyone? Yes. So now about the official um, uh, Docker Hub uh, organization that are storing images for the Jenkins project. We have two main organizations today. We have Jenkins. For instance, you have the official Jenkins controller image, which is, for instance, that tag. That's the Jenkins organization and Jenkins infra, uh, Jenkins CI infra, sorry. CI infra, yes. 
So that organization hosts some images such as, let's say, this one, for instance. These are two examples. Each organization are, map, are mapped to a corresponding GitHub organization. Um, mapped one to GitHub organization. We have Jenkins CI for the first and Jenkins-Infra. I will add the link on the notes for a, a richer uh, notes later. So what is the difference between those two images and how do we decide? When the artifacts that we produce are consumed directly by Jenkins users, such as the official Jenkins image, official for agents controller, a plugin HPI file, then we decide to host them on the Jenkins Docker Hub organization with the code on the Jenkins CI GitHub organization. When the artifact itself is not directly consumed by the Jenkins users, then it means it's mostly used on the Jenkins Infra code organization on GitHub. And if it produces a Docker image, it will be stored on the Jenkins CI Infra corresponding Docker Hub organization. The example to make it easier to understand is the website Jenkins.io. The source of Jenkins.io is on Jenkins Infra slash Jenkins.io. And it produces a Docker image, Jenkins CI Infra slash Jenkins.io. Uh, that image doesn't exist on search for it. It's only, we use something else, but that's the idea. That website is consumed by Jenkins and user, but that the service and itself and not the artifact. We don't have the need to produce a, to share or to provide to the community the official image. We are an open project, so the source and the image are available to everyone if they want to contribute, if the community need to take, the, take it over. However, in terms of operating the service, that's the reason why the Jenkins official website is not under Jenkins organization, but under Jenkins Infra organization. Is that ex general explanation okay for everyone or do you have concerns or question about that explanation? Okay. Got it. Good, good explanation. Thanks. So that means now we have to decide um, what will be the destination of the images from the GSOC project for Ashutosh. Um, that will be, cons this will determine where do we store the source code and where do we build and release based on the trust level. So the question is, will the Docker images produced for that project be consumed directly by Jenkins users or will be indirectly consumed? Um, to me, it's directly consumed by newcomers. So new Jenkins users. Yes, this mostly should be directly consumed. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means that anyone going on Jenkins IO will have a tutorial and so they will follow the tutorial and we expect images in the name Jenkins slash something, column mm -hmm. something, uh, to be present there. Is that is my understanding correct? And is that assertion looks good for you? Yes. Okay. So that means we want, so that's the first step for you. You, you, we will need an exhaustive list of the images you want. So the tags, uh, we don't care about the tags. I mean, the whether we have a 1.0 or latest or whatever, it's a trap. We don't want a latest tag. You should, we should not produce any latest tag. We should only produce version artifacts. But we need an exhaustive list. So I guess we will have something like Jenkins, I don't know, uh, tutorial, controller, whatever. The, that's the kind of information that we need an exhaustive list because we will need to then 
check with the person, the administrate uh, where you are administrating that part to um, to create the repositories, allow permission, and start the process for deploying these artifacts. Also, we will need a list of for each of these images, what will be the expected name of the repository? Is it a mono repository producing a collection of images? Is it one repository per Docker image? Is it something else? Is that is my question clear, Shutosh? Did you hear it correctly? Yes. Got it. So it looks like you have sound issue. I didn't hear you answer to my question. I got it. Can you hear me? Yes. Can we hear you? So so what is the plan for the source code? Do you want to have one GitHub repository that will deploy every images? Do we have one repository per image? Uh, uh, right now. I think uh, the uh, tutorials part uh, should be a separate repository that a separate repository that contains uh, images for tutorials and and one uh, other another one for the main docker installation for Jenkins. Do you know what do you think we should do? Um, you need to justify the technical reason why we need multiple repository over one repository though. Yeah, I think what we have for the time being on your Docker Hub repo is one, re yeah, one repo with different images. And I think we could use the same thing, just one repo should do. And we have various images and sometimes various tags, but I think mono repo uh, would be enough. Everything is technically possible, but must be specified prior to creating the assets. Mainly, the, the next question, when, when, once we know the source and the destination, then the third element is that you have to specify. Um, so that this free question need to be written. We cannot just have the question here. So here it's more brainstorming with me giving tips. But here you need to specify the life cycle of releases, which means you need to say, when do we need to trigger a new build and deploy a new version of one image, whether it's a mono repo or multiple repository, what are the conditions leading to a new version with a new tag? And then once that image is deployed to the Docker Hub, what will be what will be the conditions triggering the whole oh, let's update Jenkins.io website? Does it make sense, Ashutosh, for you? Or do yes. you want more? Okay. Yeah, the thing is, for the time being, we are uh, overwriting the image whenever a change is made. So I know that's not good practice at all. You know, it's like using latest, but even worse. Um, we have a dependabot working. Uh, we may install update CLI one of these days. And I think we may have released drafter, but I don't know if you, we should you, rely you are... on. You are defining the how. I'm asking higher level question, folks. What will be the condition to trigger a new release? Is it a new dependency that we track is available? Or is it once a week? Or is it when a human decides to make a release? Or is it something else? It's more that kind of question. Because the rest is only technical details that I have no doubt that Bruno, Ashutosh, and other will solve. Yeah, so uh, whenever a human being decides it's time to make a new version because we made some modifications to the Docker files, for example, but also when a dependency is updated, like for example, a new LTS, then we have to update. Okay. Depen new dependency is available. Okay. And then same question. Uh, but we don't need an answer now because it doesn't, it's a separated process. So it's, I don't yeah. want to block Ashutosh on that part, but you have to think about that. Ashutosh, you are producing images. 
what is the value of these images? It's only if someone consumes them. So you have the GSOC part, and I am a voice of the Jenkins project that say, hey, that's cool. You already have the value as the GSOC part, I hope, but that's a discussion that I don't have any voice on. However, handing over your project to the, to the Jenkins community, that could be you working for the community. That could be someone else. It's not about who and not about how, but more about the what again. And in that case, what I'm thinking about is what will be the conditions, and you have to think about that to be sure that once you have a new image or the change, what will be the process to deliver that to the end users? Because pushing an image to the Docker Hub is not enough. Because right now, for the GSOC, you chose to override using the latest image pattern, but that won't be the case for Jenkins, I. and we must not. Does it make sense? Yes, yes, it makes sense. Cool. So it, it's a new constraint. It's not something that you had to, to resolve until now. So that the context change. So it's not that you did bad or did wrong. That's absolutely not. It's just a context change to think about a different context, to make the handover from a GSAC project to something widely used. Um, I, I let Bruno guide you on the steps, what, what would be required and what is not a requirement, but more uh, nice to have thing, uh, because I don't have I don't have the scope of the GSOC fully on my mind, so I delegate to Bruno and Jean-Marc on that part. But if we want that work to be uh, pushed on the Jenkins project, these are requirements. Okay. I think we have all elements to answer you. Most probably, the destination will be asking the GitHub uh, Jenkins CI organization administrator to create a mono repository that uh, you, Bruno, Jean Marc, at least, will be admin of. Uh, and then we will have to ask uh, the Jenkins uh, Docker image administrator to create the repositories and add the proper token if needed to allow building these images. Which leads us to the infrastructure parts now. So as a, I'm administrator of the Jenkins infrastructure parts, but I don't have administrative uh, permission on Jenkins. I can only work on the Docker Hub part for you. So my proposal is that now we, we are going to open a Jenkins-infra slash LDesk issue. So we, Jenkins infra dash LDesk is a GitHub repository owned by the Jenkins infrastructure team used for everything that has a foot on the infrastructure or Docker Hub or GitHub permissions. So we have a centralized location where to track this kind of requests. So that means Ashutosh you will have to summarize with the help of Bruno and, and John Mark um, everything we said today, and you will have to open an L desk issue that will be the actionable. Because then from there, we, the Jenkins infrastructure team will be able to contact and ping the different actors and have a centralized follow. Is that clear? Yes, that's clear. Um, you will have a CI that can be available on ci.jenkins.io, the public Jenkins. This one will be easy, um, a Jenkins file. We action from Jenkins infra team to track the job for builds. So we will create the job somewhere on CI Jenkins. So you will give you the link on the LDesk issue. You add the Jenkins file on a pull request and automatically CI Jenkins CIO controller will track and give you uh, checks on each pull request and each commit on the principal branch. But that's only CI. The CD part, the deployment, will be on a private part that you won't see. I'm still not sure uh, which controller needs to take care of CD. We have two controllers that are able to push to the Jenkins infra, uh, to the Jenkins uh, Docker Hub. We have trusted CI Jenkins IO, which role is to manage the update center and the official Jenkins images. And we have infra.ci Jenkins IO, the controller for the Jenkins infrastructure test with 
which pushes all the Jenkins CI infra images, but a few Jenkins images just such as the acceptance test harness. At first sight, I believe that we should use infra CI. Um, my proposal is without thinking in details, it's just because uh, that one is easier to operate. We can, we can in an easier way get information because trusted CI as its name implies a really, really uh, closed controller. And I believe the amount of dependencies and things that we can put on the images here start to be way above what we expect to run on trusted CI Jenkins. Hence my proposal to have it on the infra CI where we already have infrastructure level images, which is literally the kind of images you are building, except the infrastructure is only for the tutorials, not for the public infrastructure. Does it make sense or are there remarks, feedbacks or counter offers on that one? Okay. CI proposal is here to operate and less security concerns about the image content. We can revisit the choice of the CD, of course. The main takeaway for you, Ashutosh, here is that you will have separated CI and CD. That's way different than what you are building with GitHub Action today. Today, you can control when I have a tag, then deploy to Docker Hub, or when the build happened on the master branch, then deploy to Docker Hub. You have control over this one. You will lose, you will lose part of that control as soon as we will start the official push because we want to run that on a trusted environment. However, you won't lose ability to run integration tests or any kind of test and build on CI Jenkins IO, which is publicly available. So now that will be you to open Jenkins Infra Desk and we will cover these steps in the Infra Test, in the Help Desk, sorry. Is that okay for everyone? Be aware that we might have other feedbacks that could absolutely say the opposite of what we just said now asynchronously on that written issue. That's why we need written communication because oral communication is for brainstorming and uh, asking and answering questions. But that one will serve as an official specification that we can persist and come back to over time. So that should answer your question. Is there any other question on that topic? No, thank you. No problem. If anything, if you forget anything and you want to come back or have any question further, please ask the question, start a, a rough issue with the, just a bit of context and ask your question there on the thread. No problem, we can answer them. That's not a problem. This can leave. You you don't you are not expected to produce something written once and never touched then. Stefan can confirm that we quite often edit our issues content. The important part is that we have the question and the discussion persisted. So the future Ashutosh in eight months, when he will have to come back saying, Why did I make that Docker file? You will have a written answer that you can think about and the community will benefit from that that's my goal sometimes you even reopen an issue that you have closed so no big deal so everyone does that that's not a problem that happened is that good for everyone yes. cool those thanks ashutosh for the work you did on this uh that that's a great project i hope you learned a lot and have a bit of fun at least and don't hesitate, you are free to stay here if you want to continue the meeting, but no one will be mad at you if you stop now and do something else productive. No problem, you choose. I want to stay for once. No problem. So, oh, hello, Leg. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay, just in case. So I just wanted uh, to hop on the call after the meeting we had with the CDF uh, a bit to get you up to speed about what we discussed. Uh, when can you we ca can we yeah. just wait for the first pass on the board before discussing that on a recorded session because it's recorded? Uh, and... I'm yeah, I'm not going to share details on the recorded session. I just uh, said why I joined. Okay, cool. The, if you have a few minutes uh, after the recording, it's all I would need. Yes, no problem. I will have some, mm -hmm. so no worries. Um, okay, so welcome. Welcome, Oleg. Mm -hmm. So let's start on the tasks we were able to finish during the last milestone. Um, I'm going to take them on the order of my screen, and I will take note at the same time. Uh, Bruno, Stefan, I see that you have closed the issue GDK21 change from nightly builds to weekly AA builds. Can you give us a summary of what you did and, and the outcome? Uh, my job consisted in opening a issue. Stefan, your turn. Oh, <laughs> you're such a liar. Um, we, we, we did the upgrade. It was not as easy as we, as we thought, but uh, it's done in Packer Image and Jenkins Infra and Kubernetes Management. And we did also the update CLI that match all of those changes. So right now we're using the nightly builds of the early available of GDK 21. Yeah, so it's early access. I think it's from the second week of August, something like that. We haven't seen any newer version of early access at GDK 21 build from Timurin, but Frankly, we'll get the first official version uh, next week, I think, seven days from now. So that's pretty normal. But Stefan made all of this work, so we will be able to update to a non-early access version pretty easily, I think. We'll see. Yeah, I'm confident. And that's a personal joke. Once, once the new version will be released, you might need to remove the dash EA suffix everywhere. Yeah, dash EA and sometimes <laughs> even you know. EA hyphen beta. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. That's okay. Nothing uh, search everywhere and replace all can't uh, mess up. Oh. There, there, is, <laughs> there is dash E8 also to remove. There is both of yeah, them, yeah. dash EA and dash, dash beta. I trust you will think about that and mention it during the the weekly team when it will happen. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's the we have GDK twenty one tracked even an hey hey version. Cool, nice job, folks. Thanks. Anything else to add on that topic or questions? Nope. Stefan, uh, you renewed the VPN serial. Yep. Uh, well. Anything else Easy. about? Okay. I I did. I didn't forget about the, the event in the calendar, so we have now uh, some uh, trigger that some warning that will trigger two and three weeks before. Cool. So renewed for six months as usual. Why six six months and not one year or unlimited? It's a certificate revocation list. So we need this one. We need to control finally this one. Yeah, I know. Ideally, that should be renewed every month, but that starts to be quite the work. So six months is an intermediate that has been uh, discussed uh, years ago with the security team. We can always challenge that more than six months is out of question. Uh, calendar added. Thanks, Stefan, for updating the doc. Oh, yes, I had it, uh, it did the doc. A way to get the, the new exact expiration date, which is not expiration, by the way. Next update date. And we renew the GPG keys for Stefan and Hervé because you changed machine and created new GPG keys, so we anchored it. Um, and we also removed the uh, outdated key, removed uh, Olivier Vernin, all black. Uh, we removed the outdated. So Olivier, if you hear us, you are not able to renew the VPN CRL anymore. It's been two years, but yeah. Now, because your GPG key is outdated, so 
that was the only solution we had to be able to re-encode. Uh, if Olivier want access again, he can ask us. Uh, no problem, we can re-encode with a new GPG key. That's all, thanks, Stefan. Is there any Welcome. question, clarification on that topic, addition? Okay, so next topic, expiration of the Digital Ocean personal access token. So that one is on May. Uh, la so these tokens are updated every three months. Uh, these are the tokens that allow to create and delete every pieces of resources on the Digital Ocean cloud architecture which is uh, mostly 30% of the cloud agent of CI Jenkins IO and their caching proxy. And soon that will be the home of the new updates Jenkins IO update center by default. So you understand that this infrastructure needs to be secured and rotation, uh, regular rotation of the tokens is mandatory. Um, I forgot to add a calendar event last time I renewed this in June. <laughs> so of course that broke the builds for a few days last weekend. So I opened that issue, added on the milestone and changed them. But that time I've created the calendar event. So yeah, so beers on me folks next time. <laughs> Outside this, it's like the CRL, nothing to add. It's a process we run every three months, nothing changed, it work as usual. So unless you have a question or need clarification, Nope, okay. By the way, I've closed it after checking that every digital and related jobs were working as usual and were fixed. Um, thanks, Sir Velemer, to helping contributor to make their uh, plugin builds uh, work on Windows. Uh, that was a gradle thing uh, about deletion. So the, 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 goal, the fix was really simple, but it had to be done. And so many thanks for that. The contributor confirmed they were able to proceed. Is there any question on this one? Okay. Uh, so now, just a, yep. a slight yep. remark. Uh, building something related to Jenkins on Windows is a struggle in itself. So yeah, thank you, Eve, for helping mm -hmm. a very brave contributor. <laughs> uh, thanks. Now, work in progress. What are the tasks that we weren't able to finish? Some are cross milestones, some we didn't have time, some are new. So let's cover them one after the other and let's continue. Uh, first one, no action required. I think I removed it from the milestone, so I might have added to the milestone here. Um, so let me remove it immediately. So there is a plugin that is that will be removed from the plugin Jenkins IO because it embeds the proprietary dependencies. And then there is a long discussion about what will be the solution. There is no action expected for the Jenkins infra team. That's why I'm removing it from any milestone. We don't have to track this one. It's more uh, for information. Um, I'm gonna take them in my order of priority. The most prior today is Artifactory Bandwidth Reduction Project. We are officially not mirroring Apache Central Maven since last Friday. Yay. Mark asked uh, for GFrog and received the logs until Thursday or Friday. So now we are tracking logs. The idea is that in two weeks, we will start to see a positive impact. Why two weeks? because we have cleared the whole cache system. So now we have to refill that cache, which involved downloading a lot of dependencies, only once, but we have to download them. Uh, by the way, there is an issue on the Maven a HPI test plugin and I need help. I thought I understood the problem. So I partially understand it and I need help to drive this to completion. The integration test of that plugin are broken since we started to fine tune settings XML. I need help because it involved a lot of all Jenkins decisions that were made in 2015 with Maven, whatever version. Um, the initial idea that Basil uh, also pushed on was to remove the whole plugin in charge of trying to 
to proxy every dependency so that each integration test scenario doesn't download the dependency each time. However, that plugin does not res resolve properly the mirrors and everything. So it was failing on CI Jenkins IO, but not on contributor individual laptops. My problem is whatever I tried when playing with settings XML used for this test, I cannot reproduce on my machine the error I see on CI Jenkins IO, even with the same Maven setup. So there is something I'm missing, maybe obvious, but I need help from let's say, a specialist to give this to completion. If I can't find anything on my own, I will ask directly Basil, Daniel, the usual. Uh, yeah, everyone, uh, every con Jenkins contributor I could find from the past seven years, basically. That was just a note. Anyone interested, you can look on the issue. Um, it's not blocking Artifactory because we will, the thing is that we cannot afford going back or GFrog will be really mad at that problem, but we can't afford not having integration test working for the Maven HPI plugin. So we need to solve that second issue soon, as soon as possible. Is there any question for this one? Okay. Um, I'm putting now IRM64, so Stefan can talk and describe his work while I take notes. And you want to pause, in fact. Um, I try to um, um, create an exhaustive list, and in fact, I missed a lot, so I have to work again on that exhaustive list, which is not exhaustive. But um, the um, system, uh, the shared pipeline library that uh, built our uh, images is now fully uh, functional, and even with the legacy part for Windows and the new one, uh, even when we specify um, path and, and, and specific uh, arguments. So um, I switched to um, migrate a few uh, more uh, uh, to uh, IRM64 for the um, uh, public K8S uh, cluster. Um, and we, oh, and it's another. Uh, issue we I, I merged two issues in my brain because we also uh, work on uh, avoiding uh, uh, IRM on uh, the same node uh, I, I did prepare everything for wiki and for uh, account app so account app should soon migrate to IRM64 okay cool thanks um so that mean that mean you, we have the list um then it's not let's exhaustive proceed. yes i need yep. to merge it. but my proposal is that we start with what is in your list so mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to spend more time on other images is that okay for you and yeah. we proceed and that means we can also hand over tasks or move if there are some that are easy we can move them to new contributor if they're interested great is that okay for you I, I, yes, but we need to add the fact that we need the update CLI for Elm to make sure that we got the condition to make sure we have the IRM. Right now, it's not written anywhere. I did in the issue, not absolutely exhaustive, but a good start. Uh, yeah, warning about update CLI. Uh, must be aware of the IRM64 images and check both Intel and IRM. Uh, and do you agree, Stefan, that it's an opportunity for us, for each of the images to uh, push them on? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, to, sorry. For each of these images, to uh, properly check and fix the life cycle, meaning we we should not use latest anymore on any of the images and instead use our automatic tagging deployment system. Yes, to pin them, yes. Have to switch images with an SH that we build to the same where automatic deployment 
instead of latest or annual or weekly updates. And they say friends don't let friends and so on. Use latest. So we were using kind of latest. That's something we checked with Stefan because uh, we had to update some images with packages regularly because you don't want a CV. So first problem is that some of the, our images, LDAP for not naming it, hasn't been changed since two years, which is catastrophic from my point of view. Uh, and the process should have been update CLI or whatever tool say, oh, this week, what is the, the SHA of the latest version? So you can surface to the operators, to the production operators that, oh, there is a new SHA, there is a change. So you have to find this change. In that case, it was a set share for numerous reasons, including uh, no solution were able to, to get the source of reference for these images because we don't have tags. So the pattern for building these Docker images is the same as Ash what Ashutosh did for the GSOC. We were building on a main branch and we were overriding the latest tag. And then we had that detection system that say, oh, there is a new SHA. That, that's not bad or, or wrong. That's just how it used to be which now with the RM64 problem, we need to switch to tags because when we deploy a tags version, we defer to the Kubernetes cluster, the choice of, oh, I'm running on RM64. I want a manifest for the RM64 for that tag, the image. And Otherwise, if we don't use SHA checksum, if you want to stay strict, that means we need to update all of our Elm chart to say, oh, the Elm chart must know based on the node selector, oh, I'm going to run on RM64. Here is the checksum for the RM64 or Intel, or then my checksum is there, which means update CLI need to keep track of both SHA. Not a problem. It's just we have to know which strategy. And today we are enough and we have enough bandwidth to sustain a version based uh, with tags because that would be a way for us to avoid dormant images like LDAP. Does it make sense? Yes. I think we also need to spend a few minutes, a few, few hours to uh, um, improve the chat pipeline library to uh, to uh, um, tag and push in one pass and not having main yep. and tag. But we need to, to speak about that. Yep. Uh, speed up the Docker image library to create tag for to create push tags at the me. same time for both GH and Docker instead of running additional builds. So Stefan, can I ask you for the upcoming milestone to open an issue describing the expectation here, you don't have to find a solution on the code, you just have to describe the, the high level workflow. And I propose on the following uh, reason that that will decrease by half the number of builds we do on infra CI for Docker images, is that, a, or at least 25%. But in any case, that will be less credit spent on Azure. Yes, agreed. Issue to create, right? That's, Thank you. The why is to decrease build costs from infra.ci. Is there any question about RM64? Did I miss something on my notes that you said, Stefan? No. Can we can we uh, speak about the anti FEC right after this one? Because it, it's matching. Here we are. Let's go with high availability of the services on the public cluster. Thank you. So what did you do on this one? Um, not much. I just prepared a, a pull request to make sure that uh, any kind of, of uh, application that have more than one uh, replica account got his replica account on multiple, on different node. And, and of course, I started with the RM64 because they are the one uh, that are more, more, uh, more probability yeah. to get that because there is a few nodes. 
and that means that uh, Kubernetes tend to spawn all the all the um, replica on the same node. Cool. And I was able to review your pull request and validate on a local cluster that it works. So the next step is to deploy and see how it behaves on real life with AKS Autoscaler. Because that one cannot be tested except in production. So yeah, we might bring down the wiki for a few minutes. <laughs> but better doing it on the control way. So that means you need to, to decide an operation time upon the status Jenkins IO. And then we can merge and see that one. That oh, shouldn't take about, I was about to, to do that right away after the, the meeting, so I will have to wait, okay? You, if you trust that it will, it won't break the system, no problem. Okay, Otherwise, beers on you. No problem. Which means then we need a list. Uh, that's the new, yeah, new yep. list. But that should be almost the same list as the one you did for the <laughs> RM64. Yeah. A list of tasks to apply this because then we can create issues and mark them as a newbie. Uh, and then that means you will be able to drive the newbies. If you have new contributor that want to try opening pull request and contributing, you can drive them, give them feedbacks. Uh, we have Oktoberfest coming while you can spend your, uh, your brain on something else more valuable than drinking the beer, for instance. Is that clear? Perfect. No more, no more question. Okay. Uh, next step. Blah blah blah. Uh, I'm gonna report for Hervé about updates Jenkins IO migrated to another cloud. So problem, problem statement: update Jenkins IO run on AWS on whole virtual machine, which is not even highly available. That's a really important service. That's the the most important service of the whole infrastructure, as I, as I would say. The goal is to use a mirror redirector system. So Hervé was able uh, to build an HTTP redirector, which is running on Azure. And now he started to two parallel tracks, starting a mirror on Digital Ocean using the, L, the same L-chart as we have on Azure cluster. So we use the same bricks. That will be the default mirror that will be hosted in Frankfurt. Then in parallel is working with Cloudflare to start a sponsorship. So they will host uh, mirrors of this one in the form of uh, S3 buckets. The goal is to have one on US East and one in Asia eventually. So the, the proposed timeline will be having a brownout before end of September to try uh, last, last week of September, unless we discover something complicated, uh, to move the updates Jenkins say your domain name for one hour to the new one on Azure and see the results. Of course, we will test with controller before that, and we will ask from security and usual contributors. But the, the whole idea is that we have redirects, so we can continue using redirects that will remove from five to seven K of bandwidth billing from AWS. Worst case, if everything migrate to only digital ocean, so digital ocean primary mirror is being built. Uh, worst case billing scenario, that should be around 700 bucks per month, which is 10 times less than in AWS. So even on the worst case, that will be easier for us. If we cannot sustain both CI Jenkins IO builds and update on update Jenkins IO on digital ocean, we will move CI Jenkins IO somewhere else or find new uh, new sponsors. And so Hervé has started contacted digital ocean or is going to to increase or, or move the uh, the sponsorship here. The goal is to leverage the impact of moving that service to Azure on Azure itself. Cloudflare answered and is evaluating sponsorship for US and Azure. Worst case, we have or we have a box for we can sustain one year of mirror or one year on US as secondary fallback. 
Uh, we have a clean deployment of Elm charts. So that the next step for Hervé will be to continue installing the mirror on digital ocean and then um, deploy the update center JSON index on all the mirrors at the same time. So that will be done by trusted CI Jenkins IO every 15 minutes. So that will be the next big step. Is there any question or clarification on that at the most important topic? One, two, three, okay. So now, now, now I got uh, a few SSL certificate expires in 25 days. So Mark, thanks. Mark, our best monitoring system ever, detects that the 5 of October, the certificate for this free domain will expire. So after a quick research, when we moved and uh, migrated uh, AKS clusters, a change was propagated. That means these domains, are the three of them are pointing to our cluster, which redirect them to Fastly for WW Jenkins IO CDNized the version of the website. The thing is, we still need to have TLS connection before the redirection happen. And the culprit is there is a problem with the certificate renewal inside our AKS cluster. I try to give a summary here, uh, but we need to remove one certificate Let's Encrypt setup from Fastly and remove one ingress domain from our AKS cluster and then renew the certificate that should solve the problem once for all. The main reason is because we have one ingress with four or five host name, which means one certificate with subjects, uh, alternative names. And one of the domain names, www.jenkins.io, is failing, which makes the world certificate renewal to fail. And why is it failing? Because www.jenkins.io is managed by Fastly themselves. Let's encrypt included. And I think Erwin and I missed that cross domains due to how Fastly works. So that should be the culprit. So we are working on this one for the upcoming milestone. I'm taking it by default. Any question? Next one is uh, we had um, unexpected slow times on some BOM steps. So basically the BOM is a way to track Jenkins bugs. And there is that long running bugs when you have a lot of concurrent agents running a lot of concurrent pipeline steps that make it slow down somehow. It's really hard to reproduce and to track, but when you have 300 or 400 parallelized steps, which is our case for the BOM steps, the, some SH steps, and now as Mark discovers some stash and unstash steps as well, takes minutes when they should take seconds. So for instance, seven minutes to run a curl head on one of the ACP. The SH process takes less than one second, but then it takes seven minutes for Jenkins to retrieve the state, close the connection, and do whatever they do internally. So due to that, Jesse helped us, and we enabled on our some of our controllers, mainly CI Jenkins IO, a new uh, startup flag, which changed the way the pipeline CPS system, the durable task, when you restart controller, pipelines can resume after the restart. The way that mechanism works, it changes its behavior. I don't know the low level details and I don't, or I don't want to share them now, it's public, but we are trying that new mode now that should have a great impact. So now we are going to watch and measure the impact on the bomb bit. Is there any question on this one? Okay, so now I'm gonna track this with Jesse. Uh, this one has been removed. Uh, Jira, login page, and the left status, Mark and Hi, we didn't have time to spend on this one. Uh, Stefan, status on Matomo. Yes, um, there is a, two different parts. There is the MySQL instance that I started to uh, uh, create as code. Um, infrastructure as code. So we did merge the network part and now we have, um, I have a, a pull request in draft that need uh, 
some discussion and review uh, that should provide a MySQL managed instance to use. Uh, as for the rest, the, the image, uh, I've done nothing yet on it. Okay, we so <clears throat> a new subnet draft for the Terraform manage MySQL instance. So we need need to discuss. Is that correct? Yes. Validate some specs. Uh, no more work yet on the Docker image. But no, no, you, no. You, you clean. You already started to clean, right? I I I th I think I did start something two or yeah, three weeks image. ago, but not this week. But no more work yet. Okay. Yeah, I think something like I am sixty four. I that's what I started. Cool. Um, next step, certain email from SPF. I didn't have time to look. Uh, will you have time to look on this one, Stefan, honestly, or do we move it to backlog? Uh, you mean by myself? The yes. problem will, will probably be to understand where those mail are coming and we're sending them and, and the whole circle, but... That's not a problem. That's just a question. Do you feel you will have time given I'm off and there is most probably heal for one or a few days? I will try. I will try. Okay. That's something I like. But at Stefan might oh, so let me. Might have some time to spend on. We'll try to find some. Thanks. Uh, just a word about Jenkins in Frappaker image from our new contributor uh, was not able to visit us this week. Uh, he started to work on playwright artifacts uh, because we discover on the G CI Jenkins IO agent, whether container or virtual machines, but over Linux, uh, we had unwanted artifacts, mainly uh, package JSON and node modules. Uh, that's not a problem. That wasn't a blocker. Uh, he found that it's because of the sanity check, because we check that given the dependencies we install during the provisioning, then we should be able to install play right, play right test and run a command. By installing the, that test framework and the associated command, it will embed the tools and its dependencies, creating these leftovers. So uh, we started a discussion do we want to have that tool as a tool and we need to track it instead of using latest? Or do you want to only keep removing them as part of the sanity check? So Stefan, I will let you continue the discussion from there since you initially implemented the playwright. I try to extract information from my memory and put them on the issue, but I need you to help the contributor. If you can't, we will... Uh, um, a brainstorm with him uh, next week. Yeah. If you don't time, don't have time either. I didn't even remember that, but yes, I will try to move my brain up. Um, as I said on the message, recommendation is to only clean up artifacts after the sanity check. And I believe they started to work on Jenkins CI documentation uh, as uh, Mark gave them, but that's more a non-infrastructure topic. So thanks for that work, uh, uh, non-infra topic. So just to mention, because we have someone else helping us, so that's really nice. And that's all for me. Sorry, I kept you really long. Uh, do you have other topics you want to add? Okay, I haven't seen a new triage issue, so that means we can we can close. So, quick reminder: I'm off Thursday and Friday. Uh, we shouldn't have an impact, but yeah, uh, at least less work done. But I trust Stefan will do a lot. You already did, uh, and we'll see if everything is uh, going better.
Any one last word before I close the recording? No? Okay, I'm stopping screen share. Thanks for everyone. Thank I'm you, stopping guys. recording. See you next week for people watching the records.